Paul, Paul made references to sports uh, often as, as he began to preach and as he began to write. You know, he, he dealt with the people where they were. He dealt with the culture of their time, and he communicated and understood his, his audience. He talked about uh, finishing the race. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, he says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So we're talking about a race and, and, and running a race. And we talked on Wednesday about the sin and, and, and the weight. And the King James Version says, let us, let us throw off every weight, every weight and the sin, meaning that the sin and the weight are two different things. So weight can be something that oppress you, pull you down, get you off focus. It doesn't necessarily have to be a sin. So let, let, us, let us throw off every weight as well as every sin. But Paul gives references to sports. He talked about sports. He knew his audience. And, and, and I told us on Wednesday, sometimes they would, they would almost be naked. And in some athletic events, they would even strip naked and have their athletic events because they didn't want any weight holding them from doing what they were to do. Now, now he, he, he was speaking in a pagan, in, in, in some instances, in a pagan culture. And so this is how they, they would play their sports because they didn't want anything from preventing them from reaching their goal. And he talked about that goal. He said body exercise profits little, but spiritual exercise, it profits a lot. And, and so some people, we, we, we run to achieve a goal that's going to perish. But he talked about we need to run in such a way that where we, we receive a reward that will not perish. So he gives illustrations about, about sports. And we talked about the fourth quarter. And, and when we do this in the fourth quarter, or at the end of the third quarter, people who understand sports know what this means. You don't have to say anything to me. You don't have to encourage me. You don't have to say it's time to roll. The only thing you got to do is throw up four fingers. And I already know what time it is. We already know what time it is. It means that we've been working, we've been practicing, we've been going in, and it doesn't matter what happened in the first, second, or third quarter, it is now the fourth quarter. So you, you, you'll see football players and you'll see basketball players, you'll see people at games and some, some of us don't know or didn't know what it meant you know, when they was throwing up four fingers, and some of us knew what it meant, but it just meant that now is the time. So people have been trying to figure out where did this originate from? And, and some believe that it came from um, Paul Bear Bryant, who was Alabama's coach in the 70s. And Alabama would come from behind, and they would practice so tough, and they would hold up four fingers. And when they would hold up four fingers, it just meant regardless of where they were in the game, they were going to win the game. So many Crimson Tide fans, they believe that that's where it came from. And just many people believe it, it came from Bear Bryant um, in, the, in the 70s. It meant because he had, he had a small team, but they was fast and they were, they were focused and disciplined. And they, they would outrun people because their practice, were, it, it, it was so tough that they said that, that's who it came from. So when they threw them four fingers up. And it began to trend across the nation because they were, were nationally televised. So many believe that that's where it came from. So now you got high schools and middle schools and little league teams and college teams that throw the fours up. But some believe that it came from uh, Jimmy Johnson who coached the Cowboys in the 90s from when he coached in Miami in the 80s. And they said because the Arkansas Razorbacks was doing it in 1964 when they played their first two games of the season, and they came back from the first two games in the season by being down in the fourth quarter. And when they came back, they threw their fours up for the rest of the season because they understood what the fourth quarter meant. And Jimmy Johnson was on the team in 1974, so they believed that he took those practices with him in the 1980s when he coached Miami. So we, we really don't know where, where, where the fours come from, but we know that, that it's here today. And, and it really means that, that this is our time. 
We own this moment. It, it means that we, listen, we own this moment. Whatever just happened don't matter. This moment that we're in right now, we own it. We own it. So, when you look at somebody that's run the marathon, we ran a 5, 10K, but, but this one guy talked about running the marathon, and people believe that when you run a marathon, the two most difficult points in running the marathon is at the beginning and in the middle. At the beginning, one of the things that's good about running the marathon, Pat, is at the beginning you got a lot of people that's cheering you on. Go, go, and, and that's exciting. But sometimes people take off too fast in the beginning of the marathon, and they don't understand that a marathon, man, it's, it's a lot of miles, and so you take off too fast. So it's difficult because you really want to try and pace yourself. So that's a difficult time, and then it really gets difficult in the, in the middle because at the beginning they're going to be cheering you on, and in the end they're going to be cheering you on, but in the middle the crowds are going to get smaller and smaller. And you have a couple of people that's cheering you on along the way. So now you reach that 13th mile, it, it's, it's not as big, and everybody's not saying go, and, the, and, and at the start line people are not cheering you on and jumping up and, and saying let's go. It's you 13 miles in, and then you realize once you're 13 miles in that wait a minute, Wait a minute. Uh, I'm, I'm very tired 13 miles in. I'm exhausted 13 miles in. I want to quit 13 miles in. Then you realize I got 13 more miles to go. So, James, you remember we was running and we ran the first time we ran around. That was the 5K. And so we were tired and exhausted after the 5K. And then we're like, man, we got to do this another time. So it's in the middle, at the beginning, everybody was excited, and, and come on, we get ready to go and do our first one. We was excited, but the, the cheers got a little less and less when we went about to cheer when I hit one corner. Where the cheerleaders at now? They, they, we hit one corner, wasn't nobody there. So it got a little tough, and oftentimes that's what happened in life. You know, is it, you, you run a good race, and, and in January, we're talking about free, and, and we got the illustrations, and we got the, you know, the elephant, the, 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 this whole, the, the monkey that's holding on to the peanuts, and all the illustrations. We say that we free, we deliver, we set free, and we go into the thirst is real, and everything is exciting, and then life happens. Life start happening. We, we, we let go of some things in 2016, and then along the way, things happen, and we're not as excited as we were once we first started. And the summertime come along, and you're not as committed and consistent as you were when you first started. And some of y'all that work out, you get excited about working out, but there's when people, you losing weight. Oh, girl, you're doing good. And oh, man, you're looking good. But this, okay, now you've lost your weight. How do you continue in that? How do you, cons how do you stay consistent with that? And so it's, it's somewhere in the middle that becomes, it becomes frustrated. And that's what you got to win. You got to win that battle in the middle. You got to win the victory in the middle because that's where it's tougher in the middle where you have less people celebrating you and hollering for you and screaming for you and in your corner. And you got to discipline yourself and say it's not about the people. It's about me finishing this race and finishing this race strong. And so Paul was speaking and Paul began to talk and he was speaking. He, he said, further, further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is isn't." It is no trouble for me to write the same thing to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. He said, watch out for those dogs. <laughs> he said, watch out for them dogs, man. What? Watch out for them. Watch out for these folks that's trying to get you off, off track. You got some pretty dogs. You got some male dogs. You got, never mind. You, you just watch out for them dogs. It said, those evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh, for it is we who are the circumcision, we who serve God by his spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reason for such confidence. Paul said, I, I used to operate under the law, now I don't live under the law anymore, and I have every reason to brag about the law, but I live in the spirit now. He said, if, if someone else thinks that if someone else thinks they have reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. He said, look, I'm just going to give you a little bit of my credentials. I don't really have to do this. I don't really feel right doing this, but I'm just going to tell you this. I was circumcised on the eighth day. So I'm really a Hebrew of the Hebrews, uh, 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 of the people of Israel, of the tribe 
I'm, I'm an Israelite. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews in regard to the law. Matter of fact, I'm a Pharisee as to zeal persecuting the church. My name was Saul. I was persecuting the church. God saved me, changed my name to Paul. He says, so man, I understand the law. I understand that. As for righteousness based on the law, faultless. I was faultless, man. He said, but, but, but I want to share this. He said, but, but whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost everything. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. It's not about my righteousness, but it's about his righteousness. I want to know Christ. Yes, to, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attain into the resurrection the dead, from the dead. Not that I have already attained all this or have already arrived at my goal. He said, I hadn't already attained all of this. I, I'm not where I want to be. I'm not where I probably should be. I hadn't, I want to be at this place, but, but I'm not there yet. He said, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. <laughs> and, and this is what we're going to talk about a little bit. He said, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do. This, this, this important. So he said, so you got to wake up on this. He said, this, this one thing I do, though, after everything I just told you, this is what I do. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. He said, I press toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. It's important that you, that you, that you finish strong. It's important that, that, that you finish strong. Clemson play, played Alabama in 2016 and they lost the championship. Then Clemson played Alabama in 2017, and they won the championship. And, and the thing is, is that Clemson was down in the game, and they came back, and they won the championship. They were down in the fourth quarter and came back and got the victory. Many know about the greatest comeback in the Super Bowl history is when the, the uh, New England Patriots beat the Atlanta Falcons, which I'm not – no, don't, don't clap for that. I'm, 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 I'm not a fan of the New England Patriots, but, but they were down 28 to 3. And they came back and won the Super Bowl. And they said it was the greatest comeback in Super Bowl history. Being down because it was something about the fourth quarter. It was something about Tom Brady. He was down in every Super Bowl that he ever played in. And, and, and that he won, he was down in every Super Bowl that, that he won. I think he has four or five Super Bowls. I mean, he had five Super Bowls. Yeah. All right. So, 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 uh, um, they, 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 they came back and they won. So, in other words, they didn't allow what was taking place in the first quarters to allow them to lose track of the fourth quarter. In other words, they, they knew something, understood something about the fourth quarter. See, it's important some people think that championships are just won on a Monday night. Or they think that championships are won on a Saturday evening. And they don't understand the grind that it takes. So when you see them holding up the trophies and holding up their fingers, you don't understand that, that it was a process. And that they worked and that they fought and that they sweated and that they, they were toiling in order to get to that moment. We just watch the game and eat popcorn and eat chicken. And, and man, he should have done that and he should have done that. But they've been working all year long to get to this point. And some of us think that it's, that it's, that it's just easy, that it just happened. I'm going to show you some.
tonight was, listen, we give you scholarships, we give you, uh, you know, stipends and meals and a place to live. We give you nice uniforms. I can't give you guts, and I can't give you heart. And tonight, hey, it was BYOG, bring your own guts. And they brought some guts and some heart, and they never quit to the last play. It's the fourth quarter, baby. It's the fourth quarter. Stand to your feet. It's the fourth quarter. It's the fourth. Y'all ain't ready. It's the fourth quarter. It's time to get them balls up. It's the last part of the year, and it's the fourth quarter. So it doesn't matter what happened in the first part of the year, because now it's the fourth quarter. In other words, we own this moment. Get them balls up. Get them balls up. Listen, many of y'all know if y'all have been to a Memphis Grizzly game. Y'all have been to a Memphis Grizz game. It doesn't matter what happened the first three quarters. It doesn't matter what happened the game before. But in the fourth quarter, they say, everybody, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Because it is the fourth quarter. So I'm here to tell you that it does not matter what happened in the first three quarters of the year. It does not. It don't matter what happened in January. It doesn't matter what happened in June. It doesn't matter what happened in May. Right now, it's the fourth quarter. Stand to your feet because we own this moment. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. It's the fourth quarter. It's the fourth quarter. So I want to share something with you just about the fourth quarter. See, oftentimes we give up in the moment. Larry, something about the moment. People cheat on their spouses because of a moment. We, 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 we could have named this series The Moment. People make terrible decisions because of a moment. You were caught in a moment, in a lustful moment, in a, in a desperate moment, in a broke moment. You let yourself go because of the moment. Because I got hot, because I got upset. I ended up in jail but because of a moment. But look, look, look what a moment means. This is what a moment is. A very brief period of time. You, you done got caught up. You done lost yourself. Because of, because of a very brief period of time. You got challenges in your marriage and so you stepped out of your marriage. Because of a very brief period of time. You didn't pick back up the sack because you were broke for a very brief period of time. So you lost yourself. You done lost your virginity. Y'all don't have no church. For a very brief period of time. You was doing a good thing. You was doing a good work. And you went back to who you said you was never going back to for a br very brief period of time. Some of you that went back to folks that and gave you a disease. Y'all don't want to have no church. Y'all done got quiet. Y'all done got very, thank you. For a very brief period of time. Whew. Listen, share a couple of things with you. And we're going to say amen. Number one, don't depend on the, on the successes of your past to get you through the challenge of the moment. You can't depend on the successes of your past to get you through the challenge of the moment. Because sometimes there's a challenge in this moment, and we lose ourselves because we think about the successes of our past. And we say that, well, because I won that time, I can win this time. Well, because I, I was able to, to overcome this temptation that time, I can overcome this temptation this time. And we become lax. And we don't do the same thing that got us there. So you got to do the same thing that got you there when you're there to keep you there and even more. But oftentimes we get there and we become comfortable with getting there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm cool now. I, 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 I done made enough. I'm, I'm cool now. You know, I'm, I'm in the right place. I'm, I'm okay now because I'm not, I'm not fornicating now. I'm, I'm okay. So, so the things that I had to kill, I don't really kill them anymore. 
See, in order for me to be free, Jesus set me free. And I've been on the wall and I was running a good race for a long time. But sometimes we start picking back up the things that we shouldn't have picked back up. And we end up falling again. And you wonder why you fell again. Because you got complacent. Because you felt that you was okay. And you are not okay. You got to keep on pressing. Keep your feet on the gas. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We were playing a team. See, we had won a championship one year. And we won a championship that year. We, we, we lost like the third game of the season. We didn't lose another game, and we won the championship. And so we, we went into the next season, and we were beating every team, and we hadn't lost a game that season. And so we made it to the city championship this year. And so one of the guys that I was coaching with, I was showing him the film because we were scouting. I said, man, look, this is what we're going to have to do because these guys are really good on offense. He looked at the film. He was like, oh, yeah, we're we, we going we gonna to beat them. No, 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 coach. They, they, they for real. And we got to put up, you know, we, we got to be able to stop them. We got to change some things up because these boys are very talented. He was like, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, Cole, listen, we got to strategize because we got to beat them. We end up going into the game and we ended up losing the city championship. Because it was something that we took for granted. So we didn't do the things that we did in order to get us there. We thought that, that, that the successes from our past was going to allow us to be victorious in that moment. And we ended up losing. So sometimes you got you and you got life. See, this is me and this is life. And so sometimes you, you do good and you do good. You, you do good and so you score. You come off in January and you do what you say you're going to do. So you get seven points because you did what you said that you was going to do. You didn't score. You're doing good. It's the, it's the free sermon series and you're, you're doing good and you didn't pick back up the sack and you didn't pick back up the marijuana and you said that you stopped it and you didn't pick back up the woman. You, you stopped. You, you were delivering it. And, and February came and you were still winning. I mean, you, you was in church. You was consistent in church. You hadn't missed the Sunday, so you scored again. So now you got 14 points and you, it's all good. You're doing really good and, and you're not entangled in the same thing that you were entangled in in December and in February in 2016. So you were doing a good thing. You were running a good race and, and you started just, just having victory over, over so many things in your life and old people that would get you distracted and old women who would inbox you and you used to respond to them. You didn't respond to them. So you scored again. My God, my God. You joined the serve team and, and you scored again. You just, I mean, you was on, on, on point. You were doing good. When we started fasting the times you wouldn't fast now you're fasting with the with the church so you got another seven point so you're doing good you're running a good race my God, my God, bless the Lord, hallelujah. You spending time with your children, bless the Lord. You got some more points, 35 points, baby. I'm spending time, I am doing a great work. I'm doing a good thing. I done went to breathe, I done went to live. I was in all the Bible studies. God is moving in my life. My God, my God, I used to be twerking and now I'm working for the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I am winning. I'm winning. 35 or nothing. So, so, so now I don't, I don't, it, it's not that serious. It's not, it's not that intense. So he constantly calling me. We ain't going to do nothing, but I, I can go and talk to him though. I, I can talk to him. So, so that, that you got scold on. But you ain't do nothing, but, but, but you got scold on. The enemy inching at you. Well, now that's a seven. Yeah, give me seven points on it. So life, 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 life didn't hit you. you, you, you and, and so, you know, you, 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 somebody sent you an inbox and you, you, you was declining line and you went on and responded. You, you, you didn't really go in, in depth with it, but you, you just went on to respond. But you used to w wouldn't respond to that kind of stuff because you were fighting because God has set you free and you remember the, the monkey in the monkey trap and you was like, I'm not letting this, I, I, got, I, 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 I gotta be free, I gotta let this mess go. And so, so you, 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 you remember that and it got you through. And so you, you, you got scored on again, so it's 14 points. And so you were going to life group and you kind of slacked off a life group a little bit and slacked off a empower hour a little bit and slacked off a little bit. Now, now I know for me, I got to be in church. I got to be in life group. I got to be in prayer. I got, and I'm the pastor. 
And some of us, we, we come to church every now and again. Don't come to life group. Don't come to power. It's, it's going to be really difficult to really stand and be what Christ has called. It's just going to be difficult. It's difficult when you're doing everything that you should be doing, but it's going to be a little difficult when you're not fellowshipping with brothers and sisters that's encouraging you. They're saying, you can make it. I can make it. You can make it. Let me pray for you. What can I do for you? How can we glean from each other so it's going to be different? And so that's, that's kind of a, a, another, another hit. And so it's 21 points, but I'm up. I'm still up. I'm still good, baby. It's July. I'm still rolling. It's July. I'm, I'm still up. And, and, and not, not, not as comfortable, but, but I'm a little comfortable still because I got a 14-point lead. And then I'm going to go ahead and go out with, with her or him. And I know they're not saved, but I'm saved. And I, I know I only should date to marry, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Because where does the Bible say that, that dating is not good? I mean, well, who, who said I couldn't date? And, and so now I'm questioning the pastor and questioning the life group. I'm questioning certain things. Because does it really say that you can't smoke weed? Man, them pastors, I mean, does it really, really say this? So now, now, now I become... I become like, like Satan in the garden, when, when, when the garden, in the garden, even he was talking to Eve, does it, does, did he really say this? When you start questioning, did he really, I mean, show me where it say that at. So I date him, and I date her, and I know that we, we you know, we, we, we really unequally yoked, but I'm still going to do it because we, I'm just going to see, you know, ain't nothing wrong with me hanging out, we just going to, you know, get something to eat, and ain't nothing, what's wrong with that? Y'all don't have no church today. So, so that, another score, 28. But I was doing a great work. I was running a good race. I had the lead, but before I know it, now the score is 35 to 28. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. See, in, in the book of Judges, in the book of Judges, it, it, it would talk about the children of Israel in, in how they were faithful to the Lord, and when they were faithful to the Lord, God delivered them from bondage. And when God delivered them from bondage, and they saw that, okay, we delivered from bondage, then they went back to what they were delivered from. And when they went back to what they were delivered from, then God allowed them to go into bondage again. But they got out of bondage again because they repented, and, and, and God extended his grace. And when God extended his grace, they went back again. And God has said, I'm giving you my grace. I'm bringing you out. I'm giving you victory. I'm allowing you to walk in freedom. I'm blessing you abundantly. I'm reconciling some things in your life. But yet and still, you want to go back. They got comfortable. They became okay with it. So they, they didn't have the same fight, the same drive, the same passion, the same uh, the same vigor that they had in January. They didn't have the same zeal that they had when they were crying at the altar, when they were crying in the hotel room, when they was crying in their throw up, when they was crying because somebody put a gun to them. They didn't have the same zeal to be delivered at that time because God had delivered them. So come October, it wasn't the same anymore because I've been delivered for a little while and I forgot about where I was and forgot about the experience and forgot about how I thought I was going to die and I forgot about how I didn't know what tomorrow was going to look like and I forgot about how I thought I was going to be outside by myself and I I forgot about how I thought my wife was going to leave me. And I forgot about how I thought DCS was going to come in and take the game. I forgot about that when God extended his grace to me. I started doing good and I forgot and I started allowing little stuff to, to creep back in. And Apostle Paul said, who cut in on you? Who cut you off? Who you, did you allow to distract you. When you was in jail and you was making them promises and you said, I'd never go back to it. What, what set of circumstances happened to allow you to go back to what you said you would never go back to? Maybe it was evil communication corrupting good manners. You were hanging with people that, that didn't know God and you was around people that you was allowing to speak into your life and you weren't guarding your heart. And you was around them more than you was around the church. 
Maybe you didn't buy into the whole life group thing. You didn't buy into the whole empower hour. You didn't buy into all of that. And maybe you just got sidetracked because you was around the, this evil communication and it ended up corrupting you. But it didn't happen overnight. It was little by little. One touchdown after another touchdown. One point at a time. One situation at a time. And, and, and you end up falling in. And so now it's 35, 35, because what, 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 what's taking place? And, and now, now, now you feel yourself stuck. And you feel like you can't get up. And you feel like, you know what, since I have messed up, I might as well just stay in it for a while now. And so, so, so you, you get scored on again. And so now you keep messing up and you get scored on again. So, so now you're in November and you're getting ready to end November the same way that you ended 2016. Because you've ended 15, 14, 13, 12 the same way every year. And you get stuck. And you've been stuck. And some of y'all have been stuck in a vicious cycle for five, six, seven years. In this moment, in this time of the year, you get stuck and you get bound. And you, in January 1st, um, this is going to be the new me. I'm going to work. This, the, new, the devil is a lie. I'm not waiting for January the 1st. Now is my moment. How did this just happen? The Bible says the small foxes destroy the vine. It's the small things that you was allowing to hang around. It was the small conversations. It was that best friend of yours that you allowed to keep speaking into your life. It was what you was allowing yourself to watch and allowing yourself to, to allow to be in your spirit. And this don't affect me. I mean, I can do what I want to do. Well, if it offends you, then it's just, no, it was, you was allowed, you know what you've been delivered from. You've been delivered from being a drunk, so you can't drink occasionally because you know that you'll eventually turn up. Y'all may be able to do it, but I can't do it because God has set me free and I just can't take any chances with my soul. It's just me. That's just me. You do you. That's just me, though. Ooh. Look at what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. He says, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. Even though you can do it, it's not beneficial. In the King James Version, he says, all things are lawful for me. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. They don't edify. All th I have a right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. So even though I may be able to do it, <laughs> amen, because I'm grown, even though I can talk to her, even though I can talk to this married person, because we're not doing anything. <laughs> Y'all talking back to me today. My bro said, not yet. <laughs> but not everything is beneficial. So maybe I need to sanctify myself. Maybe I need to set myself apart. Because I... I got this lead, and I got to keep this lead because it's the fourth quarter. See, in the fourth quarter, what, what's supposed to happen is, in the fourth quarter, you're supposed to say that, look, it's zero to zero, because zero is on the screen. It's zero to zero. So that means whether I'm winning or whether I'm losing, really doesn't matter. It's zero to zero. So if I'm winning, and I say I got a 35-point lead, then I might slack up. Man, I've been on the wall for two years. I ain't smoked nothing in three years. I've been celebrating recovery for seven, eight years now. Hey, so I'm good. I can take a hit. I can hang around them. I can, I can, I can be around them a little bit. Ain't nothing wrong. I mean, I ain't, I ain't like, you know, uh, and them and all that. They holy wrong. I mean, I, I, I can do a little bit. I, I can do a little bit. That, that's them. That's the preaching them. But this, this me, I, I can do a little bit of this stuff. Because I didn't look at the score as if it was zero to zero. I said, I got a big lead. And so because I got a big cushion, I can kind of chill a little bit. But I got to look at this thing like it's zero to zero. In the same vigor... The same fight, the same tenacity that I had when I was locked up, 
the same tenacity that I had when, 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 I, when, I, when I, was my, I was first delivered from crack cocaine, the same tenacity that I had when, 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 when I went back to court and they said they was going to lock me up, the same tenacity that I had, the same fight, the same fire that I had then, I got to have it now that I'm 35 points ahead because it's zero to zero and I got to finish this game out strong. Can't allow the enemy to hang around. Can't allow them to hang around. So, so I can't allow the successes of the past to determine my present moment. Some of y'all been doing a good thing. You've been doing, you've been doing awesome. And you wonder, how is it that I got caught back up with him? I, I, I remember, I remember, I remember. And I was telling Keno the other I remember, I remember when I was on fire for God. And then end up messing up. I'm like, how, how, did, how did I get from there to here? How did I get from, I'm on, I mean, I was on fire and it, but it was, you allowing the, the small foxes, you are tolerating the small things. When you begin to tolerate what you wouldn't tolerate, a fall is inevitable. You tolerating what you wouldn't tolerate. You dealing what you wouldn't did. You around what you used to not be around. I remember telling the young man this because what would happen is we would hold each other accountable. But he he would try and dump stuff on me that was just you know man this is really not accountability because you would do certain things and then you would tell me what you would do and you didn't really want to be delivered. You just sharing what you were sharing and I had to stop him because it was affecting me and affecting me from really being free in God. And so I had to, to catch what he was saying and what he was, and, like, and I was like, well, you know what? I got to allow you to stop talking this to me. So now if you're struggling with something we need to talk and we need to pray about, then let's do it. But don't you go and get caught up in a situation and get caught up and come tell me what happened and what she was doing and what, no, no, I ain't, I'm not with that. And my life tremendously changed at that moment because I wasn't allowing this stuff to be dumped into my life. I used to not tolerate this and tolerate these. I don't, I don't rejoice in these conversations. Don't send me no picture. Man, she looks so good. I'm going to send you a picture. Keep your picture. Keep your phone. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Now, she got on some clothes. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear the nasty jokes. I don't want to. I don't want to see it. Y'all don't want to have no change. I just don't want to see it. You may be able to do it and you save, sanctify, baptize, fill with the Holy Ghost and that with fire speaking in tongues. But I don't want to take any chances because I remember where I was and I refuse to go back to that place that God brought me from. Number two. Number two. Don't allow the failures of your past to dictate the outcome of your present moment. So I can't allow the successes to get me off course, but I also can't allow the failures of my past to dictate the outcome of my present moment. Some of y'all done took some blows this year. You done took some major hits this year. And you done had a bad three quarters, a rough three quarters. It was extremely rough. And, and, and some of y'all done took some losses. You lost some loved ones. So that's a point. That's seven points. Because life, life started happening. So your, your kids didn't get locked up. It's 14 points. Life, life happening because you, you didn't envision this. See, at the beginning of the year, and I said, this is going to be the best year of my life. And some things happened in this year that wasn't in line with it being the best year of my life. And so, so you, you've taken a hit, you lost somebody, some of you fail. It's another seven points. You started off good and, and you and, and you seeing that some of you have been evicted. Another 28 points. You lost jobs. You, I mean, just, just hit after hit. How is it that we, we declare this being the best year of my, my life and, and some of you, you got separated from, from your spouse? Somebody was unfaithful. 
You lost interest. You found out some things about your husband that broke your heart. You're like, what? So it's another seven points. Some of you had a rough, rough, rough year. A tough, some, for some of us, this has been the worst year of our life. You, you've not experienced what you've experienced before in your life, what you've experienced this year. He never had to deal with nothing like this. I don't even know the first thing. Planning a funeral? What? What do we go? What do we do? What? I, I know how to preach a funeral. But to be on the front row? Some of us take, took some hits and some, and some blows. And, and your blow may not have been that tough. And some, it's just, just this hadn't been a good year. So you're down 28 to zero. But it's important that when you're down, that you got to look at the scoreboard, but don't really focus on the scoreboard. Because when you're down, just like when you were up, when the fourth quarter hit, you got to know that the score is now zero to zero. Y'all don't have no church today. It's zero to zero. So in other words, when the enemy say, well, you know, if the first three quarters was like this, you know how the last quarter going to be. You know, if I did this in the first three, I'm going to do this in the last. You know, if, 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 if you got put out this time, you know what's going to happen. You just got to wait for the next game. You just got to wait for the next season. You just got to wait for the next year because this is going to be the rest of your year. How the first part look, the rest of it going to look the same. There's no hope for you. You just going to be broke. So how about you just call it quits and start over next year? Just start over next year. Just press the reset button 2018, January 1st, and get it right then. Just fornicate the rest of it. Do what you're going to do. It's going to be, it's just that type of year. It's 2017, and that's just how your 2017 going to be. But you got to say, it's zero to zero. And regardless of what happened in January, regardless of what happened May 18th, regardless of what happened through the course of the year, it really don't matter what happened those first three quarters. It really don't matter because it's zero to zero and it's still time on the clock and I still got some in the tank. I still got some in me and it's fourth quarter. So I'm giving my everything in this fourth quarter. So what happened the first three quarters doesn't dictate what's going to happen this last quarter. We're going to win this game. We're going to win this game. All I know is we're going to win. But you know what just happened? All I know is we're going to win. But your brother died, all I know is we gonna win. But you got the eviction notice, all I know is we gonna win. But your husband say he gonna leave you, all I know is we gonna win. But they diagnosed her with, all I know is we gonna win. But you didn't get what you thought was coming. All I know is we gonna win. I know how it's looking, I know what you see on the scoreboard, but I don't see what you see on the scoreboard. I see that it's zero to zero, and I got one more quarter in me, and I got some more in the tank. And devil, you a lie, I'm coming to get everything that was taken from me. Get them foes up. It's the fourth quarter. I got some more in the tank. 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 Listen. Sometimes when you get scored on, our teams get scored on, and they get scored on, and they, they come out with their, with their heads down. And every good coach is going to say, pick your head up. Pick your head up. Because we weren't anticipating. We were anticipating me having a blowout. And so sometimes when you get scored on first, you think, oh, brother, it's going to be like, it's going to be a long day. It's going to be like it was the last game. They done scored on us first. So we come out in the third quarter with our heads down. And the coach said, pick your head up, baby. Pick your head up. We all right. They scored on us, but that's all right. We all right. It's some more time on the clock. It's some more time in the year. It's some more in you. You stronger than you think you are. It's some more time on the clock. It's not over yet. Pick your head up. 
It's not over yet. I know you fell. I know they scored. I know she cheated. I know he cheated. I know you didn't get the promotion. I know your daughter got pregnant. I know, but pick your head up. It is not over with yet. Pick your head up, man of God. Listen, we're going to point three, so we got to get out of here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> point three, it says, focus on winning the challenge of the moment. Because we were losing, don't worry about that, it's zero to zero. So we down. 28 in life, put that back on the screen. We down. I told you before that. Football is a game of inches. It's a, it's a game of inches. I told y'all that when my, when my brother passed in May, and we were on the scene, it's tough. And we'd never been there before. And my mom is a strong, strong woman of God. But at that moment in her life, she said, you know, man, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? She never imagined bearing a son. And I said, Mama, we're going to do the only thing we know to do. So all we know is to depend on him. All we know is to trust him. Not like I had some crazy, stupid faith. It was just... That's all I know is to trust them. And so I'm trying to figure out on the scene because we don't, what, what, this is my question. Where do you go from the murder scene when they take the body where <laughs> the ambulance don't even get the body? They take them straight to the morgue. Where, where do we go? So even now when I see a car on a record, what it does to me because they had to take his car on a record. So, just wondering, like, God, oh, what, what are we going to do? Where do we go? So, everybody getting ready to go to our house. What are we going to do at our house? We got to plan a furniture. We got to go to the mall. We got to I mean, what are we, all of these things we got to do. We got to do a barrier. We got to, who's going to preach the furniture? Where we going? Oh, my God. What are we going to do? What do we do next? All of this. Are we going to pass out at the front? Are we going to, what are we going to do? What's my mama going to do? One of her, oh my God, what are we going to do, God? And I was thinking about all of this stuff, all, everything like, my God. I don't want to talk to nobody about this. Folks texting me, I, I appreciate it, but I don't. Hey, so what are we, what we going to do? And this is what God showed me. Trust me in this moment right here. But the funeral, this, the, that. Don't, don't worry about the funeral. But what about the morgue, don't worry about the morgue. The burial, don't, don't worry about the burial. Well, the, don't, don't worry about the, the. Trust me from the site to the house. Trust me to get you from the site to the house. I trusted God to get me from the site to the house, and we made it. We're still hurt, but we made it. God, what I got to get? We got to talk to the man about the funeral. Don't, don't worry about that. Trust me to get you through the night. He got us from the house through the night. Now, God, the man calling now. What we, we got to go and see the body. Oh, my God. We going to look what we, don't, don't, don't. I got you. Trust me from here to the morgue. See, I wanted the touchdown. I wanted the healing. I wanted to be set free. I wanted to be all. Be, uh -huh. Along the way, you got to trust me along the way. I'm showing you something and teaching you something along the way. But God, what about, it's the funeral next week. Trust me, I'm going to give you enough grace for this moment right here. All you need is my grace for this moment. 
Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about the next day. Don't worry about the funeral. Don't worry about the barrier. You just be concerned about right now. And I'm going to lead you from here to there. I'm going to give you the strength that you need from right there to right here. And God continues to give us everything that we needed. From the site to the house to the morgue to the wake to the funeral to the barrier to the repast. To the day. I was sharing, Shallon just lost his brother and he, and we, 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 we was in the conversation and the only thing that I could do is tell him what my experience was. And Shallon, trust them in this moment. They hadn't had anything. Y'all, man, his brother Shay know him. And they, they hadn't. Man, big name around, everybody calling, texting, in my, they hadn't had not experienced nothing like this. But trust God in this moment. Don't worry about the next day. Right now, God, strengthen me for this moment. I need your strength right now. I know what the songwriter said, I know, but I'm talking about what I need right now. I need you right now in this moment because I feel like I'm about to lose my mind except you step in and regulate some stuff inside of me. I need you right now. He told, he told the Israelites this. Look what he told them. He told the Israelites when they left out of Egypt and they was getting ready to go into the promised land, they were in the wilderness. And this is what he told them in Exodus 16, 4 and 5. He said, then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people ought to go out each day and gather enough for that day. But what are we going to do about tomorrow? Don't, don't worry about tomorrow. I'm going to give you what you need for that day. I right, we cool for this day, but God, I'm talking about for next week. Well, my kids going, don't, don't, don't worry about it. I got you for the day. Just be concerned for the day. God, my heart is broken. What I'm going to do with this joker that just lied to me? Don't worry about that. I'm going to get you through this moment. God, they're talking about putting us out. Don't worry about it. I'm going to get you through this moment. I'm going to give you what you need for today. He said, he said, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people ought to go out each day and gather enough for that day. And this way I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. Now on the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in. And that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So in other words, he said, I'm going to give you enough for this day. Stop going for the bomb. Stop going for the home run and say, God, you know what, God? God, I got to take one play at a time. One down at a time. But I'm down. It's 28 to zero. I'm getting older. I'm 45. My husband ain't come yet. I got to do something. So because my husband hadn't come, I'm going to take somebody's husband because I need something right now. I'm getting a little older. Uh, you just be faithful today. You just be focused today. God, 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 help me in my situation right now. Today, God, I'm going to do something illegal. I ain't selling no drugs, but I'm going to do something illegal because my kids got to eat. No, no, I want you to be faithful today. I'm just going to lack integrity just a little a bit, God. I'm just going to lie just a, don't you lie just a little bit, brother. You be faithful today. Stop going for the home run. I'm going to take care of you today. It's not a game of just yards, but it's a game of inches. It's a game of inches. Because see, you don't need the touchdown on the first play. As long as you get in football, when you get 10 yards, that's the first down. So it start all over again. You get another 10, that's the first down. So you start all over again. So we're going to inch our way down the field, and we're going to score a touchdown. So now it's 28 to 7. I'm back in this thing. I got to look at the scoreboard. I ain't, I ain't focusing on the scoreboard. We got to get back here, and we got to do it again. Defense, we need a stop, defense. Defense, we need a stop. Come on, baby. I need a stop from you right now, defense. Step up, defense. Come on, baby. Make a play. Defense, boom. Pick six. We pick it off. We score the touchdown. Boom. 28 to 14. Oh, my God. The clock running out. The clock running out. It's 28 to 14. Don't focus on this scoreboard. 
focus on the next play. We got to get out here and make a play on special teams. We're going to kick our own side, kick on special teams. Don't worry about the touchdown. Don't worry about it's just two minutes left in the game. Don't worry about what's left in the game. You focus on the moment. You focus on what's right before you right now. Boom, we got the own side kick. We got the ball. Now it's our ball. We score the next play. It's 21 to 28. We inching our way back in this thing. We hadn't made it all the way yet, but we inching our way back in this thing. And we keep on going. Another pick six. Now it's 28 to 28. Oh, my goodness, man. We rolling. We rolling. Our defense making a play. It's a fumble on the play. It's some seconds left in the game. But it's still the fourth quarter. We got the fours up. The sideline got the fours up. The crowd got the fours up. The coaches got the fours up. But I'm right here. I'm in the gap, baby. Oh, my God. I'm in the gap. I got to make this play right now because if they get the first down, they can possibly milk the clock or go in overtime and win the game. But we make the stop, we make the stop, and we get the score, then we won the game. In other words, let me talk to y'all who don't understand football, who don't care anything about football. You may be down in life. The enemy may have been busting your head for the first three quarters. Things may not have been going the way that you wanted to go in the first three quarters. And you got to say, you know what? I can't look for the home run play. I can't look for God to just deliver quick, fast, and the hurry. I'm just going to trust him every moment, every second, every day. It's a game of inches, and I'm going to keep building momentum. I'm going to win this victory today. When Victor called me, I'm going to decline it. Bam! I scored a touchdown. When they say it's life group, I'm coming to life group. Just scored another touchdown. When I got to kill my flesh, I killed it. When I t- they try to entertain me in some gossip, I'm not going to do it. I'm scoring a touchdown. I will win. I will be victorious. I'm going to be the woman that God has called me to be. I'm not going back to where I came from. I know who got me sidetracked. I know what got me sidetracked. I know what got me off, but I'm killing it. I'm casting it down. I'm standing on Jesus' name. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm scoring because the game is not over yet. It is the fourth quarter, and I declare victory right now in Jesus mighty name I shall live and not die in Jesus name come on and give God a hand clap of praise hallelujah get them foes up get them foes up get them foes up it ain't over come on prayer warriors I want you it ain't over look at somebody and say it ain't over till it's over it ain't over till it's over it ain't over till it's over It ain't over till it's over. It ain't over till it's over. This year's not over yet. I know what did happen. I don't know who God is speaking to on the day. You was ready to clock out. You was ready to wait on 2018. You was ready to just say it is what it is. But the devil is a lie. It's not is what it is. It is what God said it is. And he said you shall live and not die. You got the victory in Jesus' name. You go, oh my God, you're going to stand and be what he's called you to be. You got victory in Jesus' name. I'm going to share this scripture. We're going to say amen. Hallelujah. 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 Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. And come on, stand with me. We're about to go. Ooh, hallelujah. 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 It's time. 2 Timothy 4, verse 7. It says, do we have verse 6 in there? Do we have 6? I want to go with six first if we get it. If we don't, raise your hand. If we don't, we get it? Okay, we don't. Okay, this seven. I have fought the good fight. This Paul saying. He said, I, I fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I've kept the faith. He was getting toward the end of his life. And, and, and wouldn't it be awesome for you to be able to say this toward the end of your life? I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I've kept the faith. The enemy threw his darts. He threw his swords. He threw everything he got at me. But I kept the faith. First quarter was terrible. Second quarter was horrible. Third quarter wasn't all that good either. But I got eight more Sundays in this year. <laughs> Said I wasn't going to watch that stuff no more. Said I wasn't going to touch that again. Said I wasn't going to go that route again. Woo. 
I don't care what the first quarter looked like, Johnny. I don't care what the second quarter. I don't care. Say, I don't care what it looked like. Don't allow the enemy to try and replay in your mind. You know if you lost then, you're going to lose now. You know if that happened, then this going to happen. Devil, you a lie. You don't dictate nothing. I own this moment. Because I can't do anything about the first, second, and third quarter anyway. I can't do I can't bring my brother back. We can't get that back. We can't get the we can't get that play back. You can mope about that play and lose what's right ahead of you. Or you can say, I got some more work to do. I got some more work to do. Still some more in me. In football, they say, you got to have a short memory. Because if somebody catch a touchdown on you, you have to have a short memory because you, you'll be moping about the touchdown that they scored on you and thinking about it so much that you'll get on the field and they'll score another touchdown on you. And then if they throw a touchdown on you or if you playing football and you catch an interception and it's a pick six and you score the touchdown, you got to have a short memory then. Because you can be celebrating, oh yeah, I did it this time and underestimate them the next time and get scored on. So whether I got the pick six or whether I got scored on, I got to forget what just happened. Whether I was successful the first three quarters, this is another quarter. Whether I was successful the last game, this is another game. Whether I overcame porn in the first three quarters, this is another quarter. Whether I didn't sleep with anybody the first three quarters, this is another quarter. See, you got to know that, that tension because sometimes you want to pull from back there. Because you want to say, God, if you did it then, I know you can do it again. But you don't want to live back there and take for granted, oh, that happened then, it's just going to happen again. No, the same fight, the same tenacity, the same work, the same fasting, the same praying, the same killing of the flesh that I had to deal with back then, I got to keep doing it right now. Who cut you off? You was running a good race. You ain't been delivered for all of this time. Who cut in on you? Who did it? What happened? How did you allow this one conversation to lead you to this? You looking too long and it led you to that. You, who cut in on you? I gotta fight for my freedom. I gotta fight for it. Man, listen, I'm not legalistic at all. I just like to be free. Because I know how it is to be entangled. And to be confused and to not know this and, and not have confidence in my prayers. That when I'm praying for you, I don't really have confidence because I know that I'm just, I'm lukewarm anyway. So when I pray for you, I want to believe God for you. I want to stay because I know the preparation I've been putting in. I know the fasting. I know the praying. I know the killing of the flesh. So in this fourth quarter in your life, in your circumstance, in your situation, I believe that I can get a prayer through. I believe that something can happen. I believe that a breakthrough can happen for your good. That's where I want to live. See, I'm the kind of cat, when I get the lead, give me the lead in life. Give me 35 points. When I get the lead, that's too close for me. 
I want to keep going. Give me the give it to me. That's still too close for me. I want to keep going. Give it to me again. I want to keep going. I want to keep going. We ain't letting this joker get close. I'm not playing by the same hole that got me bound. I'm not playing by the same porn that got me afflicted. I'm not playing by the same stuff that held me captive. So whether I got to get the data off my phone, whether I got to change jobs, change neighborhoods, change cities, whatever I got to do to stay free, I'll do it. Some of you playing with the enemy too close. And if you slip a little bit, he right there at you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm scoring again. I'm fasting again. Well, I'm, I'm at a place in my life where I've never been. I'm more on point for God than I've ever been. I'm keeping, I'm going to score again. I'm going to keep on fasting. I'm going to call another fast. I'm going to keep on praying. I'm going to keep on preaching. I'm going to keep on laying out the form. I'm going to keep on killing my flesh. I want to blow out. I want to blow out. Stop allowing the enemy to hang around. Stop. Awesome God. Come on, worship team. I want you to sing. And I want every head bow. Hallelujah, Lord the fourth quarter and this is going to be the best quarter of your year but you said that I don't care what happened I'm going to say it again but because I got scored on get your head up preacher Get your head up. Keep preaching it. Keep believing it. Keep saying it. Keep standing on it. Hallelujah. God, touch your people right now in Jesus' mighty name. God, there's so many of us, God, that's had, that's, that have had bad quarters, God. We've had terrible quarters. Things have happened. Things have not happened. Thought we were going to be married. That didn't happen. Thought our marriage was going to be reconciled. That didn't happen. Thought loved ones were going to live. That didn't happen. Thought we were going to stay on the wall. That didn't happen. Thought we was breathing, but we didn't got the wind knocked out of us. Just came back three weeks ago. Now we back and we still ain't got no breath. We need you right now. Strength right now, God. Do it right now, God. In Jesus' mighty name. This quarter is my quarter. This quarter is your quarter. This quarter is our quarter. Hallelujah. If it's anybody who want to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, I want you to come. Anybody who have backslidden and want to get it back right with God, I want you to come. Anybody that's gotten off track, that's gotten off course and need to get back on track and get back on course, I need you to come. You allow the enemy to get you sidetracked. Devil, you a lie. We getting on track today. We getting on course today. We getting our minds back right today. We getting our swag back right today. We getting our, our vigor back right We getting our mojo back today. Hallelujah. 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 I'm getting it back today. I got it back today. I got it back today. I got it back today. You ain't gonna make me feel guilty about what I did, what I didn't do. I got it back today. Started smoking, but I got it back today. I put it back down today. Started back drinking, but I put it back down today. Started back fornicating, but I put it back down today. Started back watching porn, but I put it back down today. Started back lying, but I put it back down today. Started back gossiping, but I put it back down today. Started worrying, but I put it back down today. Hallelujah. Fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. 
Cut it down some. You can sing. I just want you to sing a little lower. It ain't over. Anthony, it ain't over. Some of us, we walked in here like this this morning. You barely made it in here. And God gave you this today. It is not over. It is not over. Still some time on the clock. We got 15 seconds left on the clock. It ain't hit double zero. I done seen some miracles take place in the last seconds of the game. It's not over. We got some more in the tank. Strengthen your feeble knees. Get up. Hallelujah. I told them on Wednesday that we was playing in a championship game. And our star quarterback came to the sideline. We was up eight to six. We was in the city championship game. He came to the sideline. Coach, coach, my teeth about to come out. My teeth about to come out. He was about coming out of the game. We was on, we was in the red zone, meaning that we was this close to scoring. He wanted to come out the game till like his teeth messed up. I said, get your tail back in the game. My teeth, coach, we'll fix your teeth after we win the championship. Get back in the game. I saw him about two months ago. He a grown man now. He's smiling. His teeth fixed. His teeth straight. Wasn't even nothing wrong with his teeth. He thought they was messed up. You think your teeth messed up. You think you're weak. You think you ain't got it. You got it. God got it. God got it. You stronger than you think you are, man of God. Because great is he that's in you. The he that's in the world. Great is he that's in you than your circumstances. He's bigger than your circumstances. You got to believe that. Mr. Taylor, I was playing basketball about two months ago. I was playing against a kid. And we don't really like kids beating us at all. So I was letting the kid score. He was just shooting, shooting. He was just shooting. He was scoring. He ended up having me 30 to 0. So we playing, and I was coming back in the game. He threw the ball at me because he was trying to go out of bounds, and he hit my finger. He not only hit my finger, it broke my finger. So I broke my finger. I grabbed my finger, and I popped my finger back in place. And I said, let's finish this game. And I beat him 32 to 30. Y'all don't have no church. I advise you not to do that at home. Go and see the doctor. But what I'm telling you is it's not over until it's over. Keep on fighting. Keep on going. Fight in the spirit. We serve an awesome God. God, touch your people. Lift your hands up right here. Lift your hands up. God, you touch your people right now in Jesus' mighty name. From the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. Give them victory, God, in all that they do. This last quarter is going to be the greatest quarter of your life. This last quarter is going to be awesome. You stand strong. You be the man. You be the woman that God calls you to be. You believe that. Erase, forget about what happened in the first three quarters. Because that don't even matter. That don't even matter. When you get the lead, you keep the lead. When your marriage is good, don't start tripping. Keep on going. Keep on coming together. Keep on making love. Keep on giving together. Keep on going out of town. Keep on growing. Get them foes up. Get them foes up. Get them foes up. It don't mean that the enemy gonna stop. But when he come, you throw them foes up, baby. Because greater is he that's in you, the heat is in the world. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise.